Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be installing Rocky Linux inside VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. Before we begin, let's take a look at the minimum requirements to get this installed. Your PC is going to have to have at least two gigs of RAM. Four was better. You're going to need 20 gigs of hard disk space, at least two CPU cores, and you're also going to need the ISO image file that we'll be downloading directly from the website. You're going to need VirtualBox, and if you don't have VirtualBox already installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. All the steps and tools used in this video will be linked in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to grow my channel as big as possible to reach as many users as I can. With all that out of the way, let's take a look at getting this installed. And here we are at our Windows 10 desktop. We're just gonna open up our browser and inside Google, you can search for Rocky Linux and you'll find that rockylinux.org is the official website. I'll make sure I link that in the description below. In the right hand corner, we can click on download and it's gonna take us to the download page. And we have a few versions to select. I'm gonna use the x86 64 bit and I'll be downloading the DVD, which is the full version. But if you want a smaller version, you can use the minimal, which is two gigs. This one is 10, so it's a bit large. I'll skip over to the next part where it's already downloaded. Now it's downloaded and we have it right here in our downloads folder. You gotta remember the location because we're gonna to have to point to this later. We can close out of this and open up our VirtualBox Manager. Inside here, we're gonna click on New, and then we're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna call mine Rocky Linux. I'm gonna leave the machine folder as default, the type as Linux, and then the version, we're gonna be selecting Red Hat 64-bit. Then we can click on Next. In memory size, you need at least two gigs. That's a minimum requirement. I'm gonna beef mine a bit up here, and I'm gonna just move it up to eight gigs. Click on Next. And then we're gonna leave this as default and just click on create. And we'll leave this as VDI and then click on next. And dynamically allocated, we'll click on next. And we'll leave the path as default and I'll give it 20 gigs of space. And then once you have all this filled out, you can click on create. Now we're just gonna select the operating system over here on the left-hand side, click on the settings button. We're gonna select the storage option over here on the left-hand side. We'll select the controller and then we wanna click the disk icon. We wanna select the ISO image file. So we'll click on add. It's in my downloads folder, click on select. We'll select it and then click on open and then choose. And now we have it selected in the list. Now that we have that done, we can click on okay and we're ready to install the operating system. To install the operating system, you wanna make sure that you have Rocky Linux selected on the left-hand side and then we can click on the start button. So we're just gonna to navigate to the first option with our keyboard, install Rocky Linux 8 and then hit enter. Now we have the installation wizard. I'll be leaving everything as English and then hit enter to continue. You might notice two mouses. If that's because I'm using VNC to connect to this computer. So I apologize for that, but the black mouse is the one that we're gonna be focusing on. So localization and everything else in here, I'm gonna be leaving it as default, including the time and date. Next, we're gonna be selecting software selection. And in here you can choose the type of installation you want, a server, minimal, workstation, we're gonna use Workstation because I think that's gonna be the most commonly used one. So I'm gonna select that and click on Done. Next, we wanna make sure that we have the networking component enabled. And you just have to select the option over here. And inside here, we're just gonna be selecting the On option. Click on On and you've enabled the internet access to this virtual machine, and then you can click on Done. Next, you can change the root password, which is highly recommended to do that. There is nothing set by default. So you can go ahead and type in the password and then confirm it. And for the installation destination, I'm leaving everything as default here. And what you can also do is create a user password, a user for daily use, and then you can provide a username and password for that one. And then click on done. And now we're ready to begin the installation. So you can click on begin installation and it will prepare and install the operating system. This will take a few minutes to install. So I'll jump over to the next part. Okay, the installation is complete. All we have to do is reboot the virtual system by clicking on the reboot system button over here. One of the last steps is the licensing information. So we're gonna click on that. And then we have to just check off the I accept license agreement, click on done. Then you can click on finish configuration. So it's just loading back up here and we have the username that we created. So we just have to uh, type in the password that we have associated with it. Looks like it just wants to confirm some information here. So we're at the welcome screen. We're just gonna keep it at English, click on next. And we'll also leave the keyboard the same and privacy, we'll leave that on, and we'll just skip the online accounts. There's a few videos here that'll help you get things started if you're not familiar with the interface, uh, so you can watch these tutorial guides. 
And here we go, we've just installed Rocky Linux inside VirtualBox on a Windows 10 PC. The installation's pretty straightforward. There's just a little configuration that you have to do uh, with the setup wizard. It's not no different than setting up uh, almost any other Linux operating system inside VirtualBox. But if you have any questions, you go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.